Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today is June 4, 2023, and we are getting into the volume 108 of me answering your immigration related questions. As you can see, I have all your comments pulled up in front of me. As always, before beginning this video, I'm going to mention, as I mentioned in every video on this channel, I am not an immigration attorney. This is not legal advice. All the information provided in these videos on this channel are directly from official government sources like USAS and of course the Department of State with their visa bulletin. So let's start with the very first question coming from Bindash Sol. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name. Your case is taking longer than expected to process. Showing this. Can you explain it? What happening? Okay, Bindash. So if it's if it's showing on USAS side, and most likely it is because typically that's, you know, that's that, that's their message, all right? That's familiar message from USAS. I would highly recommend submitting a case inquiry. The way you do it is the same the same place where you found your uh, the message that came up to you. We're going to go to tools, and then we're going to go to case status online. And then we'll scroll down all the way and you will see submit case inquiry. So we're going to go here, case outside normal processing times. That's what you're going to select. And you will have an online form to fill out with your information, your case information and your inquiry that you will send uh, to USCIS. Now, again, most likely the response that you're going to get from USCIS is going to be very boilerplate, very generic, something like, oh yeah, we are still processing, you know, we're experiencing delay maybe, or we're still processing your case. Uh, but it's necessary to do that just in case if it really does start to get uh, to the point where it is ridiculous where it's taking too long and you're not getting a proper response if you are starting um, if you get to the point where you need to to look for additional avenues to resolve the the, the problem with your case like reaching out to the elected officials uh, working with an attorney you will have the documentation to show that you have tried to resolve the problem with your case on your own by submitting the inquiry by contacting USAS and you didn't get any uh, any reasonable response from them. And that's of course necessary in order for you to further proceed. Hopefully nothing serious. Hopefully it's just, you know, just like with most cases, it's taking a little bit longer than uh, predicted. Uh, not a big deal. Administrative processing, it happens sometimes. Um, if it's, you know, couple months, few months, I would say three, four months, depending on, on the total estimated wait time. So for example, if you look at the normal processing times and they say that for your specific case and you commented on I-130, so um, I'm gonna you know, assume that you're dealing with the uh, USAS side um, with the application, with the I-130 petition. And let's say for your specific category, for your service center, it says that it's gonna take two years, okay, 24 months. Give it another 10% of that time, so another, you know, 24 months, 10% is like roughly two and a half months. Give it another three months. And if after three months, it's still outside of processing times, obviously, and not, nothing happened, then you definitely want to start reaching out and finding out what's going on. Obviously, be professional, be polite. Uh, that should go without saying, just in case not to create any drama. Uh, but you do definitely want to stay on top of the case and not let it go uh, for, for, for too long. If it's, if it's taking more than three, four months over the normal processing time, then you definitely should start uh, looking for additional avenues to resolve the problem with the case. Alrighty, let me put this and we're going to move on to the next question from Brian T. 48, travel document. Some says it's a passport number. Other website says it's visa. Red bottom right number on visa. Anyone know for sure which one? Uh, Brian, if you can clarify a little bit uh, your question, that, that would be helpful. So you commented on the video I-130, which is the petition for alien relatives. So whenever it comes to getting the actual visa, the immigrant visa, yes, it is. it looks exactly as... Uh, uh, just a regular visa basically once you enter with that immigrant visa for the first time into the United States it automatically converts 
to a temporary permanent resident card. And that temporary permanent resident card allows you to travel back and forth outside, in and out of the country without any problems, uh, just like a resident, just like you would normally with a normal green card, uh, normal permanent resident card. Uh, so if that's what you're referring to uh, as a travel document, then yes, it is just that same visa uh, that is uh, place in the passport and it looks practically exactly like the uh, like a non-immigrant visa like a B1 B2 for example uh, Or a student visa looks exactly the same just has a few different numbers in there and uh, yes the the uh, special uh, um, Feature of this visa is that once you enter the United States with it it converts to the temporary permanent resident card um, so I guess if, if that's what you're asking for, then hopefully my answer was helpful. But if not, please let me know and I will try to, you know, clarify your question and I'll try to give you a better answer. Uh, just make sure don't answer to my comment within your comment because then I don't see the notifications for those for some reason. Alrighty, let's move on to the next one from Cher Ali Khan. Hi, my priority date is 2013 F4 category from Islamabad, Pakistan. Case is approved, still in NVC, case creation is done. When I can expect documentary qualification approximately and how long it will take more for visa? Share, thank you very much, that's a great question. So let's take a look at the visa bulletin, that's what we're gonna be looking at. So in order to, for us to tell when the NVC portal is going to be open, if we have been approved by USAS, and we are waiting for the NVC portal to fully open up so that you can start the documentary qualification process. For that, we will have to look at the graph B, which is dates for filing, that's what it's called, uh, but it shows actually the uh, when the NVC portal is opening up to become documentarily qualified. So, for F4 category, because you're Pakistan Islamabad, you're gonna be in all chargeability. February 2008, so people with priority date in in February 2008, that's when they filed their I-130 petition, that's when they were accepted by USAS, not approved, but accepted. Um, as of right now, in June 2023, these people with this priority date are getting the full access to the NBC portal. So, your priority date is 2013. So you are looking roughly at another five years, roughly another five years before you will have full access to the NBC portal so that you can become documentarily qualified. Uh, hopefully it speeds up, but a four category, it's one of those categories that takes a really, really long time because there's a lot of backlog, unfortunately. And I can personally relate because I have a petition myself in F4 category. All right, moving further, talking versus. Talking versus, thank you, you're very welcome. Uh, I'm glad my video was helpful. Moving further, Amanda Bruce, documentation, so documentation qualified since November 2022, six months pass according to the updated info, no update as yet. Amanda, let me know what the category is because depending on the category, you know, if you're in the immediate relative category, then you your immigrant visa is already available. So the only thing that you're waiting for is for the US Embassy to schedule the interview or the field office if the beneficiary is here in the United States. But if you are in one of the for preference categories that is not an immediate relative but that are subject to the backlog that we are dealing with then of course it might be much longer because you are you know you're approved you're documentarily qualified by the NVC but you're still waiting for the availability of the immigrant visa and before it is available the US Embassy is not going to schedule the interview so that might add significant amount of time so please come back to this channel if you can and let me know uh, in a separate comment, don't respond to my comment within your comment because YouTube does not send me those notifications. But let me know in a separate comments a few things. The category, <coughs> the priority date, and also the chargeability area. And by those three things, I might be able to give you a better estimate. All right, let's move on to the next one from Denise to four. Once again, Denise, thank you for your question. I appreciate that. Hi, sir. After becoming documentary qualified and yet NVC portal hasn't been made available. Can you move ahead or there's a way to notify NVC that your case is current and upload the necessary documents? Denise, I think you might got, have something confused because you get documentary qualified on NVC portal. So if you don't have the NVC portal open yet, you are not yet documentarily qualified. So yeah, so you get approved by USAS if you are approved by USAS. 
it doesn't mean that you're documentarily qualified. You get documentarily qualified at the NDC portal. And once it is open, then you can start your documentarily qualification process. So you need to double check if you were approved or, I mean, you're probably already approved by USCIS, but if you don't have the full access to the NDC portal, then you are not yet documentarily qualified, Denise. So I would definitely recommend checking out the video. Actually, this video right here, documentarily qualified, what does it mean? Real NVC case status, something, something. Check out that video. Uh, in that video, I talk about what is involved in becoming documentarily qualified. Um, so you can, you know, you can, you can see the real NVC portal that was already documentarily qualified. You can see the uh, applications that are involved, uh, the DS-260 visa application, the affidavit of support, all the fees, all the documents, so you can prepare. So once your NVC portal opens up, you can start the documentary qualification process. Alrighty, moving further to at Love. Hello, we have been documentarily qualified February 27, 2023, Manila, CR1 category. When will my wife get an interview? No interview since middle of January. Okay, great question. So uh, let's, uh, well, since it's the CR1, uh, then the immigrant visa should already be available February 27, 2023. So I am thinking right now, let's see. So it's the end of February. So March, April, May, and we're starting so roughly three, a little bit over three months right now. So, so you're still within that normal kind of uh, wait time for the interview. I've seen the interviews typically somewhere between three and four months when the immigrant visa is available. Sometimes I've seen the cases where it takes up to six months and the longest one so far that I've seen is nine months when the immigrant visa was already available. What you can do is I would recommend reaching out to the US Embassy uh, in, in Manila and uh, you can find it on usembassy.gov. You can find the appropriate US Embassy on this website right here. It's a list of all the countries with the embassies in there. Um, give them a call and say, hey, you know, I'm in this, this category. I was already documentarily qualified. The immigrant visa should already be available. When do you think I will be scheduled to interview? Um, sometimes they give out that information. They can say, hey, we have, you know, the next um, appointments coming up in the next couple months, in two months, in three months or whatever. Uh, if they don't give you any information, don't be too upset because... Sometimes they don't, most of the times they don't. They just say, we can't give you that information, unfortunately. Uh, but it should be, I would say it should be in the next few months, you should definitely have the interview because it's uh, it's getting there. Alrighty, let's move on to the next one from Lambo. Hello, thanks for these awesome sessions. By the way, I'm still waiting for my question to be answered by you, thanks. Lambo, if you can, please, please repost the question because it's most likely got buried underneath all of the comments I do get a lot of comments every single day so unfortunately sometimes some of the comments get missed like looks like your your comment has been missed i'm sorry lambo please please submit another one as a separate comment and i'll try to get it in the, in the next uh, in the next session I, I apologize for it all righty let's move on to the next one from david francis good night how long does a police certificate valid for ir5 category great question david so i am pretty sure well here's the thing you are submitting your police certificate during the documentary qualification process. If you have been documentarily qualified with this police certificate, and let's say, let's say the interview is scheduled two years after you were documentarily qualified, yes, you might have a concern thinking that, well, I have been documentarily qualified with the police certificate from two years ago and I'm bringing it to my interview. What if they say, no, it's too old? Here's the thing, technically, during the interview, the same documents that you have been documentarily qualified with are the same documents that you're providing during the interview. Have them in one folder. The same documents that you have been documentarily qualified, have them in one folder that you're ready to give it to them. But have a separate backup folder just in case you're not opening it up as a main and, and here you go, but have it just in case with you during the interview with updated stuff, updated tax returns, updated police certificate, updated whatever you can have updated, whatever you think that might be 
uh, because obviously you know stuff like birth certificate they, they you know you, you know it's, it's not gonna be it's not gonna change but things like tax returns tax transcripts whichever one you're providing uh, the police certificate things like this they definitely do you know get outdated um, so technically it should not be outdated. The same police certificate that you provided to the documentary for documentary qualification is the same police certificate that you will pr be providing during the interview. But to be on the safe side, have a backup folder with the most updated information just in case if they ask for it during the interview, you can say, oh yeah, sure, not a problem. Here you go. This is the updated stuff and that's it. Safe side. Always better to be on the safe side. Alrighty, moving further to the next question from American Dream. American Dream says, Hi, Salam Alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you so much for offering your time to help people. There's no a lot of people in this world help people these days. We really appreciate your help and please don't stop. You're making the immigration like piece of cake. <laughs> I found your channel last week and believe me, since that I almost spent about eight hours at least every day just to listen to all your videos. I appreciate it. I appreciate your kind words. I just have a question. I won't apply for I-130 petition for my parents and also have my sister she's seven years old and my brother he's 16 years old i heard in one of the videos you said or maybe i misunderstood i can apply for my parents as beneficiary and my brother and sister under 21 and can be added to my parents as derivatives yes so if that's true how can i do that if it not true what should i do thank you again for your efforts to make it easy for everyone american dream that's a great question yes so basically all you're doing it you're going to be submitting two separate i-130 petitions you're going to be submitting an i-130 petition for your mom you're going to be submitting i-130 petition for your dad and on both of those petitions you will include their obviously you know your your one of their kids but the other two kids as well your 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 little sister and your little brother they're going to be included and because they're under 21 they will be going as the derivative beneficiaries so for that there's really nothing uh, uh, nothing major nothing special that you need to do just make sure that they are mentioned in both of the applications as obviously their children uh, be prepared to provide the birth certificates for everyone showing that you know they are kids that that uh, Obviously, marriage certificate between your mom and your dad will be necessary as one of the initial evidence um, pieces of information that you will provide. But that's that's really it. It's very straightforward. And uh, your parents, because you're filing for your parents, I'm assuming you're already a U.S. citizen. Uh, so it's going to be an immediate relative category, which means that once the USCIS case is approved, once the case is approved on USCIS side, that's that's the proper way to say it uh, the immigrant visa is already available so once you know once you're done with USAS once you're done with the NBC it's just an interview it still will take some time it will still take you know at least a year year and a half potentially for all the administrative processing but if you have everything prepared you know if you know if you did your research and it sounds like you've done all your research and um, just start it as soon as possible. That's that. That's really it. Because there's still some time that is involved whenever it comes to I-130 petition, even though it is immediate relative category. Alrighty, moving further to the next question from Oracle. Oracle, thank you for another comment. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for your help for us. I'm filing I-864W for my two kids and I-864 for my wife and my older daughter. Okay, so two kids, and then your wife and two and one daughter okay so two and two okay with the form i-864 part 5 question 4 which says if have dependent children enter the number there uh-huh i have my wife my elder daughter which i will be filing i-864 for them my other two kids i will do i-864 for them now the dependent children how many do i put in part 5 question 4 since i am filing exempt for my two little kids I really appreciate your support. God bless you. Oracle, thank you very much. That's a great question. So yes, you're definitely going to put the full, you know, if it's if the language is specifically dependent children, then you're definitely going to put four because the only ones that they mean that are not dependent in their eyes is the, one, the ones who are over 21. So if your older daughter is over 21, then yes, of course, they, she's, she's not going to go as a dependent child because she's over 21 but if she's still under 21 and you're just you know you're going to be submitting the i-864 for her regardless even though she is under 21 then of course you're going to include um all three of them as yeah three so two kids that you're planning to do the exemption and then one so three 
Um, so yes, you're definitely going to put the number three uh, in, in that question. If it's a specifically dependent children. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Alrighty, so let's uh, put this and we're going to move on to the next question from Adrian Richards. Adrian Richards says, uh, there's actually more. Good day, sir. I have been recently got approved on my spouse I-130. Congratulations. However, didn't indicate where to apply for the immigrant visa since I'm in Jamaica. They said to file IA-24, yep, which we did on the 13th of May. How long will it take for approval from NVC? Okay, great question. So, um, because it was already approved by USAS, once you file the IA-24, you will see that on USAS side, it will, you know, um, update to the that's it, case closed. So uh, because we're 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 talking about the spouse, I would say it will depend if you are a US citizen or a permanent resident. Because if you're a US citizen, then you, the immigrant visa for, for your wife, for your spouse is already available. That's it, pretty straightforward because it's immediate relative category. Once USCIS case is approved, that's it, immigrant visa is available. But if you're a permanent resident, then it's F2A and the F2A we're dealing with some of the backlog. It's not that bad, but still we're dealing with some of the backlog. Then there will be a little bit more of the time to wait. So let me know in the follow-up comment if you can, which which category it is if you're a US citizen or permanent resident and I might be able to give you a little bit more information based on the visa bulletin and based on if the immigrant visa is already available. Alrighty, moving further to Jitendra Oza and looks like there is a comment to the comment of Jitendra. Uh, so Jitendra says, I'm Indian and my brother has filed my case in November 2015 from Vermont Center. Approximately when should I get my green card? And then Trace X answered, the current priority date for F4 sibling petition in India is 2005. Let's double check that. Let's see. Da, 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 da. For India, 2005. Yep, September 2005. Uh, in India is 2005 and your priority date is 2015. Thus, it will take approximately around 10 years, maybe more or maybe less, depending on the speed of the backlog process. Trace, you're 100% on point. Thank you for answering that question for me. Uh, yes, Jitendra, so judging by the visa bulletin, because we see that the full length of, uh, you know, people that are waiting as of June 2023, roughly, you know, since, so what is it, 2005, and we are in 2023, that is... 15 years plus three years, 18 years. So roughly 18 years for India chargeability area. Um, and you are in 2015, so yes, roughly another 10 years, which is very long time. But unfortunately, that's that's the situation right now. With uh, hopefully it will speed up. But like Trey said, there's a potential that it might slow down because backlog it only keeps on growing. Unfortunately. All right, moving further to. Kaku Agboja, sorry for mispronouncing the name. So Kaku says, can you please do a video on IA24 petition? Thank you for request. Yes, I I don't see why not. I can definitely do that and I will put that on my to-do list. In fact, let me, I have my to-do list on my separate screen. Let me put IA24, uh, fill out video. And uh, yep, I can definitely do that. Hopefully in the next, few days, I'm, uh, I'm gonna take care of that. Alrighty, moving further to Adrian Richards. Adrian Richards says, good day, sir. I've been recently got approved on my spouse. I have 130, however, didn't indicate where I apply. Oh, I think Adrian Richards, we just replied. Okay, yes, we did. I'm gonna post the same thing here. And Adrian, I really appreciate you following up and, and posting the second one. And for everyone who's watching, if, if I'm not, you know, if I didn't get to your comment, within like two, three days, maybe four days, then it means that it probably got buried underneath all of the comments that I receive. If it's urgent, if it's if, it, if you really need the answer, post it again, please. I apologize that I'm not able to get to some of, some of the questions and comments in time, but I get more and more stuff, more and more questions. So some of the stuff just gets disappeared. And I think another question from David Francis that I have already responded, yes already responded to this one. I'm going to post this here. Moving further to 
Masood Khan, Musad, Masood Khan says your answer is always very comprehensive, brother. God bless you, brother. Regards, Masood. Appreciate you. God bless you too, brother. Moving further to Mr. Wo, thank you so much for answering my question. Extremely helpful. I'll probably have more questions in the future, one step at a time. Mr. Wo, anytime you have questions, you're welcome to this channel. Moving further to Jacqueline Swan, how is Ankara doing with interviews for K1 visas? I'm still not able to make appointment, no appointment available. Ah, Jacqueline, I'm sorry you're dealing with this. So the best way to do it is, I would say, reach out to the uh, to the U.S. Embassy in Ankara and ask them. Um, they might not give you any information. They might say, hey, I'm sorry, we can't give you the information. But I think with questions like this, they should be able to open up their scheduling and look at it and give you at least rough estimates. I think they, that you should be able to do that. Again, you are able to find here so Ankara is in Turkey so let's see Turkey uh, Turkey there it is let's see Ankara there we go so here's the phone number for Ankara Embassy give them a call and and ask them say hey I'm trying to schedule an appointment for a K1 visa and I'm not able to schedule it when do you have any estimates because you know if if you're still not able to schedule an appointment if you've been trying for a long time maybe maybe you're better off trying to schedule an appointment for K1 in another embassy, in another US embassy somewhere else. Maybe not in Ankara, I don't think in consulates, because I know there's consulate in uh, in Istanbul, there's a consulate somewhere else in, in Turkey, I don't remember where. If they don't do the interviews in those consulates, maybe you might wanna look around and find a US embassy not in Turkey, but in one of the bordering countries around Turkey, where you can go for an appointment and schedule it much faster. Uh, it's doable. Uh, I know people that, that, that have done it for different types of visas, for uh, non-immigrant visas, for B1, B2 student visas, because they could not schedule it in their local US embassy. They scheduled it in another country. They traveled to another country. Of course, it is more hassle, but you know, if you have been already waiting for a long time and there's still unknown when you will be able to schedule an appointment, that might be something you want to, you know, take a look at and potentially find a solution that way. Okay, let's move on to probably our next. Nadine Parkinson says, I'm a green card holder. Okay, I think Nadine, uh, a question I ask you about in Florida is my friend, not me. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So Nadine, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, because Nadine had a double question and I couldn't understand it. Why in one question it was uh, it was for uh, out of status, and then in another question the person was filing a petition for I think a child, and I couldn't understand why. But it was one for a friend and one for Nadine. Nadine, thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. All right, let's move on to the next one from Adorable. Adorable says, hi, sir. My daughter priority date December 2021. Documentarily qualified March 23, 2023. IR2 category from Philippines. When's the interview? Okay, Adorable, thank you very much for your question. So congratulations on becoming documentarily qualified. It is IR category, so it is an immediate relative. So the immigrant visa is already available. The only thing that we are waiting for right now is the US Embassy to schedule the interview. So, March 2023, it's been now roughly April, May. So, two months, a little bit over two months, two and a half months. So, like I said, it is typical for these, you know, the interviews before NBC sends the case to the US Embassy and then US Embassy opens up. And the thing is with the US Embassy, they can't schedule the interview earlier than 30 days okay so let's say let's say for example if in your situation they their scheduling is your appointment is available for your interview for your daughter interview in let's say august 1st they cannot send you a notice that the interview was scheduled for august 1st up until july 1st and the reason for that is they can give you only 30 days so far. Why? Because of the medical examination. They cannot give you more than 30 days for you 
to schedule the medical examination. There is a conversation and that goes for everyone who's watching this video, kind of a little bit of a bonus for everyone if you stuck around till the end of this video, <laughs> make it worthy for everyone. There is a conversation within the Department of State to get rid of that requirement of a 30 day for the medical examination and give it six months, I think they wanna do for the medical examination. So as long as the medical, medical examination is done within six months, then you're good, which is great because the US Embassy right now, for example, for, for Adorable, they already know when the interview is going to be scheduled. They already have the date. It's probably already scheduled, but they cannot send the notice to Adorable that the interview was scheduled for, let's say August or September 1st or whatever, because they have to schedule the, no the send that notice within 30 days before the interview so that the daughter of Adorable goes for that medical examination within those 30 days. If I think that hopefully makes sense, I already explained it several times. But uh, uh, so that's really the only issue, that's it. So once Department of State gets rid of it, then we're gonna know our interviews, you know, three months in advance, four months in advance, five, six months in advance if necessary. And it's, it's much better to know Yes, it is, you know, five months ahead, but at least, you know, I'm not in the dark and sitting and waiting and not knowing. So at this very moment, Adorable, would you, the best thing to do is again, reach out to the US Embassy. Uh, let's, uh, Philippines, yeah, so I already showed that in Turkey. So Philippines, let's see, Philippines, let's see how many embassies, because I, I don't think I ever clicked on Philippines. No, there's only one in Manila. There you go. So reach out. This is a phone number for them. Or you can go actually, you can go to their website and double check to make sure. There you go. This is updated. So this is 2000. Let's see if it's the same number here. Yep, it's the same number here. So give them a call. Ask them, say, hey, already documentarily qualified. It's immediate relative category. So the immigrant visa is already available. I just wanted to see when the interview is going to be scheduled. Because it is most likely already scheduled they can tell you. If they don't tell you, don't be too upset. They can say, hey, we can give you that information. Say, okay, that's fine, it's all right. But it's worth a shot. Uh, but like I said, you know, earlier, you know, roughly, you know, anywhere between three months and I've seen nine months people wait in the media relative category for their interviews and hopefully it will be scheduled sooner than later. So thank you everyone for uh, tuning in for this video. Thank you all for your question. Always appreciate your questions. As many questions as you have, you are more than welcome to ask on this channel. Um, I will uh, see everyone in the next video. God bless. And uh, yep, see you all in the next video.